Hi, my name is Juha Kivinemi and I come to you today via video to talk to you a bit about digital youth work. I come from an organization called Verke, which coordinates the Center for Expertise on Digital Youth Work in Finland. And as you may know, we are very fortunate to have this kind of system of centers for expertise where we can really focus on a certain topic to aid the youth sector in, in kind of developing further. And digital youth work has long been uh, a priority uh, with, the, with our government as well. So this is something that we get to focus on. Currently our tenure runs uh, for a couple of more years until 2023. And we are doing this now together with our colleagues in Koordinaatti up north in Oulu. Our main target group is basically practitioners working uh, within the youth field with young people. So we work uh, equally with uh, municipalities, we work with parishes, we work with NGOs, basically anyone that is working within the field. But we also try to incorporate this kind of double approach. So while we are training practitioners, we are also working with organizations to help them develop the conditions in which their uh, practitioners function in. So making sure that when, when there are uh, very motivated practitioners that are developing new and innovative work, uh, there is also the strategy or the planning in place in that organization to, to kind of let that take root, so to speak. Uh, otherwise, there is a risk that uh, it's very sporadic and it doesn't really become a common daily practice, especially if people change jobs, then all the practice goes with them. Um, additionally, we also try to work with uh, organizations and vocational schools and and schools that are training youth workers so that people coming out of the uh, education pipeline into the field would already have kind of a basic understanding of what digital youth work can mean in their, in their daily work. Uh, our tasks and goals are as follows. They come directly from the, uh, from the uh, national uh, youth, youth policy program. Firstly, uh, we have been tasked to make sure that uh, digital competencies increase within the youth field. And that's kind of our bread and butter. We train youth workers a lot. Uh, even now during COVID times, we are uh, implementing online trainings, online sessions to help them increase their knowledge uh, on digital topics. Um, but we also produce a lot of material uh, videos like this one. Um, uh, videos uh, on certain topics. We do podcasts, for example, on on climate effects of technology. Uh, we do do all sorts all sorts of publications, all of which you can check on our webpage, and they are available for free. We had a lot of uh, have a lot of material available in English and some available in Swedish as well. Uh, secondly. We would like to see that uh, knowledge-based uh, development of the field would happen more. This is somewhat happening already, but we would like to see even more uh, that development of new digital youth work practice, new digital youth work approaches and even strategies would have even a stronger basis on, on youth research, on actual data uh, about young people and, and how they use digital media, for example. And we are trying to also give, give the field tools, uh, tools for this as well. Uh, thirdly, this is kind of an oldie but goldie, uh, but we would like that youth workers were more educated on both the risks and, and opportunities provided by digital media. Uh, the public discussion, whenever it flares up on digital media, it's often colored by this kind of uh, worry about children, how they're overusing digital media or digital technology. And, and we would like to see that there would be a more balanced discussion between uh, kind of the pros and cons of what there is, because we can't also talk about uh, all the potential of digital media on self-expression or getting young people's voices heard uh, without also acknowledging that there are, are these uh, ugly phenomena around digital media as well. So a more balanced approach and more balanced discussion is our goal. 
And finally, our friends in Coordinati are are focusing on on grooming, online grooming of young people, and this also comes straight from the government program. That this is something that needs to be addressed. This is kind of my outlook on on digital youth work and especially on technology education. My favorite sci-fi author Arthur C. Clarke said already in the 60s that uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And this is kind of uh, to, ref to reflect and highlight that if we have no idea how the technology and digital media around us work, uh, it might as well be powered by pixies and stardust. So we all need to be kind of aware of what is happening in digital realities around us, digital technology, digital media, all of this stuff, or otherwise we are just passengers. We have no control over uh, of, of how the digital media works. Some viewpoints to digitalization uh, could be a revolution of communication, so who gets to produce information, how that information is transmitted to people, etc. Uh, it also has a huge impact on employment, uh, like how do we work now already, how will we work or how young people will work in the future. Uh, it's definitely going to be something different than what we are used to. I've always, uh, or I've often said in trainings that, uh, or I've asked practitioners to point out to me what is the profession where uh, there is no chance that you will you will have to use uh, digital technology in any way. I would argue that that even if you're a plumber, or if you're, even if you're a construction worker, in the future, kind of this uh, digitally aided work will be much more there than it is now. Of course, especially important from young, for young people is social interaction and social interaction is something that has also been already changed by digital technology a lot. Even for our age group, I'm 41 at the moment and still uh, already my ways of connecting with my peer groups are different than it, than it uh, would be without digital technology or than it was when, when uh, we were children, right? And also a lot of new services and also new phenomena, both positive and negative phenomena, are being sprouted up because of digital technology. And we really need to be aware of this. And all in all, digit uh, digitalization is really a global force of change and something we cannot shut our eyes from. We cannot just put our head in a bush and say, OK, we'll just do youth work as we've always done it and not acknowledge this at all. So digital youth work, uh, it might sound like something super complicated, but it's really not. By definition, and this is a definition uh, agreed on by all member states of the European Union, uh, digital youth work means using or addressing digital technology or digital media within youth work. That's as simple as it is. So whenever you're somehow using uh, digital media, if you're using digital technology uh, as a part of your work, you are already doing, doing uh, digital youth work. Or this addressing part means that if you are merely discussing with young people the effects that digital media has on their lives, you're already in the realm of digital youth work. And that's all there is to it. It's not meant to be something super complicated. It's not meant to be something done by only a select few, but rather it's something that can be included as a viewpoint or as an approach in any kind of form of youth work that you may happen to be doing. So it's, don't overthink it. Don't think of it as something I need to learn so much so I can do it. Start small, start somewhere and start experimenting. You just might find your own particular brand of youth work. Important thing to also remember is that uh, when we talk about digital youth work, and I will repeat this over and over, when we talk about digital youth work, we are still talking about youth work. So the, the main goals, the main, uh, main kind of overarching things we are aiming for with youth work, so empowerment of young people or supporting young people in their growth, those don't go away just because we are using digital methods to work. The goals are still the same, the values are still the youth work values that are in place and for example professional ethics, they are still there. Uh, we are still youth workers working with young people 
And the important thing is to also remember that you don't have to be coders, you don't have to be network specialists. I'm, I'm not a programmer, I even do some coding exercises. I build robots with young people sometimes, or I train youth workers to build robots with young people. But I'm not a programmer and I don't have to be. I'm a youth work and I understand youth work and that's what our strength is really. Uh, some, some examples of how, how digital youth work can be looked at. You can look at digital youth work as a tool and then the emphasis is on digitalizing youth work practice, uh, youth work activities to both enhance their relevance, to make them more current for young people using the services and also sometimes making them more accessible because uh, this can be a huge huge boon for also uh, inclusion and uh, accessibility. So for example, if you're, if, if you're using digital tools to facilitate young people's participation, this is already using this as a tool, uh, most common thing would be maybe using a WhatsApp group or a similar messaging tool to organize young people's activities. Then you're already using, using digital youth work as a tool within your work. Second thing would be digitality as an activity. So that would be then building new things on, on digital, uh, digital platforms, digital approaches. And perhaps uh, the emphasis would be on learning by doing. So young people learning new skills within these digital hands-on activities. So for example, game education, like game, de game development clubs, uh, for example, digital maker activities like uh, programming, building robots, like I mentioned, would be this. Or maybe getting, young, getting kids to go out into the forest using GPS-enabled adventure apps. It's a really cool thing as well. And finally, digitality can also be seen as a content in youth work. I already mentioned discussing online phenomena with young people. Uh, could be organizing events connected to young people's online cultures. Uh, and remember, I say, I say now cultures, there is not one single online culture, but rather a, a huge plethora of subcultures of young people online. Um, and it could be also using digital media to support young people's self-expression, how they can publish their art, for example, uh, in, in platforms or any kind of content they created. But the emphasis is usually from the youth work side, side is uh, on issues related to and phenomena related to digitalization. So it makes no sense for us to be only offering platforms for young people to publish their content, but rather talk about what that means for young people's empowerment. Because again, we are youth workers, we are not platform designers, right? Um, right now, we can't talk about digital youth work without touching up on the COVID-19 pandemic, because this was a huge change uh, for youth workers. Uh, over, overnight, youth work had to jump into the deep end with uh, online offerings. And remember, online youth work is only a part of digital youth work, but right now it's kind of, there is a equal mark there because right now what we can mostly do is this online component. But just keep it in the back of your head that uh, digital youth work can be, can be and should be a lot more as well. Common platforms that young uh, youth workers uh, jumped on when the pandemic hit, at least in Finland, uh, was Discord. I think this was the most popular um, platform for youth workers to build their offerings and this is because it's easily accessible, it was free to set up and it was fairly secure. Uh, not, not the most secure platform but fairly secure and kind of a place where you can build uh, a virtual youth house fairly easily and have that presence in uh, to be available for young people. Additionally, uh, youth workers jumped on platforms where there maybe already kind of were. A lot of uh, youth houses were already using Instagram, but they started using it more. Uh, and in new ways like having Instagram live videos. Uh, they jumped on TikTok a lot where because young people are already there, but youth workers mostly weren't yet. Uh, they continued using WhatsApp for allowing young people to contact them also from home. And also some youth workers went more into digital game environments where they weren't previously. So a lot of new services were adopted. 
Common questions that were thrown in, on Verke's side were uh, firstly about technical is issues, like basically how do I do this thing now technically. Uh, a lot of uh, organizations had issues with technical uh, stuff in terms of, uh, let's say, too aggressive firewalls in their connections, which, which they couldn't change due to uh, municipalities, IT policies, etc. And we thought we uh, gave a lot of advice and a lot of consultation on on how these could maybe be circumvented or how they could argue to IT professionals in the municipality to kind of loosen up these restrictions so they can actually do their work. Uh, a lot of questions about hardware. Okay, should I get a webcam? Should I get a better webcam, a microphone? Uh, what kind would that be? Uh, a lot of questions about data protection, like what kind of uh, data protection is in place in certain platform? Can I do this or this in this platform? I always use the, uh, use the example that you would not uh, discuss super sensitive information with a young person face to face in the middle of a youth house. You would probably go to an office, close the door and then talk in private. And the same applies in online environments as well. So you wouldn't want probably to have sensitive discussions in the main room, for example, in a Discord server, but rather you would maybe move into a, a protected messaging service like Signal, for example, that's encrypted. And then you have a lot more privacy also uh, to connect with that young person and to support them in whatever they need. The question is, of course, often when you set up a new service, okay, how do we let young people know that we have this service? How do we reach them? And, and kind of issues with identifying how to take a proven youth work concept and moving it into an online platform. So we have this successful thing in our youth house. So how do we do that in Discord, for example? Uh, the RAIN network that r researches, uh, researches the Erasmus Plus program and the youth field, uh, they also did research on the impact of COVID on, on youth workers. And their results Europe-wide Europe were pretty striking. Uh, the first results said, for example, that some youth workers said that everything has changed. Like all the structures have changed, the framework of youth work has changed support environments change, like pretty much everything. And this was, of course, a huge shock to suddenly jump into the into the deep end with uh, online youth work. And I think Finland had this easy in the sense that, at least on a national level, we already had this experience of, of successful online youth work over the years. But not every practitioner have done it, of course, so personally this could still be a big shock. But in this slide, it's cool to see that uh, most uh, practitioners still saw that youth work values themselves hadn't changed that much. And that's a kind of a comforting thing that the youth work is still there. Another ongoing research is from the United Nations University and also SALTO in cooperation. And they are looking at the effects of the pandemic on digital youth work uh, and Assessing, assessing that impact. So firstly, they, they, in the preliminary results, they saw that uh, digital youth work really needs to be taken seriously as, as an essential field in youth work practice. And yeah, I don't disagree. For me, this has been clear for years already. Secondly, uh, youth workers do require additional support for implementing effectively youth work practice and also, also getting kind of uh, taking, uh, taking care that youth workers' well-being is also addressed in, in online environments and in digital environments, because this comes with other kind of, other kind of baggage as well working online. And thirdly, uh, there is clearly a need to provision youth workers more uh, on, on ways to implement youth work. They need skills, but also they need hardware. They need uh, software, they need access to certain platforms. And uh, during the pandemic, uh, when the pandemic hit, it was clear uh, on a European level that a lot of youth workers, they had to rely on their own devices, uh, their own, own access to actually implement youth work. And of course, that shouldn't be. As we are workers uh, working in the field, uh, we should be provided with the stuff that we need. 
So finally, what we need to look at uh, from, from all of this and from the kind of effects of the pandemic, we need to look at what we learned and how we use it. So um, our, our one concern in Verke is that uh, once the pandemic is over, then all the, all the learning and all the kind of motivation of digital youth work will just fall away. And, and reopening youth houses means that no practitioners will have time to uh, implement digital stuff anymore. And we would hope that there would be a critical examination of what we learned, what are the takeaways from this uh, strange time, strange year of 2020 and beyond, uh, and this online youth work uh, plunge. And, and what do we take away from that? What do we keep? What is, what is worth saving? And secondly, we need to be better at identifying our core. We can't just say, oh, we, we do youth work and we support youth empowerment. Those are nice sentences, nice words, but we need to be able to really dig in and really analyze what it is that we do. What is our core offering to young people, uh, to also society? What is, our, what is our responsibility as the youth field towards the neighboring society around us? what it is that we do, because when we can identify that, then we can much better react to the next crisis, whether it's using digital, uh, digital approaches or something else. This also benefits all the work that we do. And uh, kind of plunge into digital youth work and the online youth work has shown that we are maybe not always very clear on what our core offering actually is, even if we think that we are very clear in it. Third, we need to assess and evaluate. So uh, the offerings that we offer to young people, the practice that we do, is it still relevant to young people? Uh, some practitioners have said that when they've adapted their existing practice to this COVID reality and this online reality, they've seen that their, their beloved thing that they've done over the years, it's actually gotten an upgrade. So they feel it's much more fresh, it's much more relevant to young people, and the feedback from the young people also echoes this. So if a practice is much better offered in a digital way, then it should definitely be uh, still offered in a digital way. And of course, this is not always true. It, nothing is automatically better by adding technology. Uh, we always say that uh, every practice needs to be evaluated from the viewpoint of uh, does digitality make this better or not? And if it doesn't, then you shouldn't do it. I personally love technology, uh, but it shouldn't be about the technology. It should always be about the youth work. As it's all, it always is. As I said before, it's all about the youth work. It's about the youth work goals. Uh, it's about the youth work values. So even if we either have to offer things digitally and online as we do right now, or whether in the future we want to make things more digital or we want to incorporate more digital technology into our work, it's still about the youth work and the digital technology should be in the service of that. And that's also comforting because then we don't have to be digital professionals, we just have to be youth workers and use the technology as a service uh, service for youth work. And finally, we should really recognize what young people are doing with digital technology and digital media, how they are, for example, trying to influence society around them. Are we up to date? Uh, my example is from uh, youth participation. So if we are, if our offering is that you have this municipality service where you can come and you can influence society, and that's kind of not working, but on the other hand, you see young people uh, produce offerings like this one on the slide that's about uh, a young girl making, making comics uh, that are very pro-feminist and highlighting issues in society. Or on the other hand, an account on TikTok where another young girl is uh, making people more aware about rare, rare things like uh, Tourette syndrome, for example, or other rare diseases, and, and kind of normalizing uh, differentness. And these are young people's ways of influencing society, and we have to can catch up with it and to kind of conform to that and support them in that. 
whenever it comes to digital youth work, we always say try, try, try again, but there, of course there needs to be a plan. So when you try something and something fails, you need to figure out why it failed and what you can learn. In snowboarding there is a saying, if you're not falling down, you're not trying hard enough. And I think that applies to digital youth work as well. So go, go forth, make experiments, try what sticks and, and learn some new cool stuff. Thank you very much. Feel free to contact us either at info at verke.org or my personal email address at juha at verke.org. Thank you for your time and I hope you have an excellent day.